This is Michael with Field Tech Academy. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to request tickets on Work Market and how to make counter offers for expenses or for pricing. Let's get into it. The website is workmarket.com. You're going to log in. If you're not yet a Work Market member, watch one of my previous videos on setting up your Work Market account. Once you're logged in, you want to go to My Work, and you'll see that currently you're highlighted on All, so whatever is in orange is what it's displaying on the right-hand side. We want to see what's available, so we're going to go to Available. Once this goes orange, this will refresh, and you'll see these are sorted by default by the updated date, which can show tickets that are older and past today's date. What I want to do is I want to see all the tickets that are for future dates, so I want to sort them by scheduled date. This ticket looks attractive. It's an AMP swap and it pays $300, but we need to see how that $300 is structured. When you want to go into the ticket to request it, you can't just click on the rectangle even though it highlights when you hover over it. You actually have to click on the title itself. Now, if there's several tickets available and I want to look at all of them, a lot of times what I will do is I will go up here and I will right click, open a new tab. That way I can open each ticket individually so I don't have to come back to this page. So if we look at the AMP swap one first, this one is actually a flat fee. So that's nice. That means you're gonna get paid $300 to do this job. A lot of these are structured to where it'll say $300, but it's actually broken out by hour. So it might be $40 an hour. So if you do the job in an hour, you're only gonna get paid $40. So it's a little misleading when they'll list this high dollar amount. But in this case, it is a pure $300. When you're deciding whether you wanna bid on a job, you need to determine, number one, can I do the date and time? Do I have the skill set to do this job? Do I have the tools to do this job? Do I have the supplies to do this job? Those are all factors in whether you request a job or not. If you're newer to the platform and you're not a very experienced tech, then you're going to be limited on what jobs you can request. If you're an experienced tech, but you're new to the platform, you can do the job, but can you get the buyer to assign the job to you? That's always the million dollar question when you're new to the platform and yet you have experience. So I'm gonna to talk to you about some tips on how to do that. First, let's talk about the basic layout of a ticket and what you need to look for before you request the ticket. There are a lot of boilerplate pieces, things that are on every single ticket for this buyer. And keep in mind, every ticket is put up by a different buyer. Every buyer has their own requirements. Every buyer may have their own process of how they want you to check into the job, check out, talk to tech support, what paperwork they want used. With every job, you have the option of using Work Market's generic sign-off, and clients sometimes will have their own custom paperwork that they want you to fill out, and they won't allow you to use Work Market's generic sign-off. Work Market is different from Field Nation in the fact that buyers can choose to pay the fees for you, or they can have the fees paid by you. So in this case, this buyer is electing to have the technician pay the fee. So you're gonna be paid $300, but you're going to net 285 because there is a $15 fee. A lot of the other buyers will route a ticket and the fee is already built into it. You'll notice that more on tickets where it's an odd dollar amount, like it's not an even $50 or $60 an hour. If it's like 58, 50 an hour, well, they're building in the fee already and that's why it's an odd amount. When you're new to the platform, you wanna make sure that you read through all these little details because you wanna make sure you understand what you're agreeing to. When you've done this for a while, you kinda of start to realize what's generic and you kinda of get the feel for things. You may not have to read everything verbatim. This job is to deinstall the old amplifier and reconnect the new amplifier, which is also on site. Looks like they're going to be leaving the old amplifier on site, so we're, the technician is not gonna be responsible for returning it. This really looks like a very simple job. Even if you weren't an audio video expert, swapping an amp when you already have one installed is pretty simple for someone who has the ability to look at an existing piece of equipment, take photos of how everything's connected, take the one out and put the new one in and connect it the same way. To me, this pay is really surprising for the amount of work. So this is something I would request. The deliverables section is important to read so you know what you're required to do for the buyer during this ticket. You'll see that they're gonna want two photos of the amp and you're gonna see they want one sign-off form. 
So as we scroll down, we're gonna see the application option. This buyer requires a background check. To be on work market, you're not required to have a drug screening or a background screening. But there are certain buyers that will not route you the ticket and allow you to even request it if you do not have these things in place. I have a background screening, but mine was done in 2020. A lot of buyers want a background screening within the last 12 months. In this case, I see that my background screening is out of date. So I'm going to go ahead and request my background screening, which doesn't take a long time so that I can request this ticket. Since I've done one in the past, it's a much simpler process for me to do my background screening. I'm just going to renew. The cost is going to be $25, and you might say, oh, I'm new to the platform. I don't want to spend $25. I haven't made anything off of the platform yet. This one job is $300. If you got this job, it would more than pay for that because you're going to not even have a shot at a $300 job because you're not willing to spend $25. You need to think of this as an investment into your future. When you fill this form out, you're going to want to put in your home address. It needs to match your residence. You're going to have to put in your social security number. So if you're a business, you don't want to put in your business address. This background screening is on you as an individual. So you need to put in your individual information. Once you filled everything out, you're going to hit submit. Then it's going to ask you for your payment information. The address here will need to match your card's billing address. You'll select process payment. Now you've requested your background screening. You're going to return to your profile. You'll see now on your profile that it shows that it is pending, that it has been requested. The background screening will come back pretty quickly, maybe even within a few hours, and then it will show on your profile that you have passed a background screening and then you can bid on any jobs that require that. The drug screening takes a little more time, so you want to get that moving because you're actually going to have to go to a medical facility. You're going to have to pee in a cup. You're going to have to wait for them to send off a sample, test it, and then post the results. So that takes a little bit more time. So I literally refreshed my page and my background screening is already back showing a pass. Mine may have been simpler because I was previously screened. I haven't lived in a lot of different states. There are a lot of factors that can determine how long it's gonna take for you to get your results. But as you can see, it's possible in some cases that you can get it super fast. So now I'm clear, I can go request this ticket. So you see here, this was an eligibility requirement that I did not meet. Now if I refresh the page, that requirement is now gone. I can now request this ticket. I have now applied for this job. You're gonna see now that my application is pending, which means that it's been sent to the buyer. They are now gonna review it and possibly assign me to the ticket. If you are a new tech and maybe your profile isn't as strong, so you're nervous that you may not look attractive to the buyer, I would go into the messages section here and I would send them a message, let them know. I'm new to the platform, but I'm an experienced tech, assuming you're an experienced tech. I'm very professional and I will be on site on time. I will complete the work properly and I will follow your instructions. Those are the things the buyers really care about. They want you to be punctual. They want you to be professional. They want you to have the skill set to complete the work properly. And they want to know that you're coachable, that you will listen to them and you will do things the way they tell you to do them. If you send a message like this after your application, I think it's going to improve your chances of attracting that buyer. The other thing you can do is to try to look through the ticket and see if there's any phone numbers. Sometimes they're visible, sometimes they're not. If they are visible, then I would call the buyer and say, hey, I just applied for this ticket. I just want to let you know I am new to the platform, but I'm blah, 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 blah. When you're a new technician to the platform, you want to do whatever you can to optimize your chances of looking good to the buyer. You want to make sure you fill out your profile very fully, put all of your experience in, sound very professional. In one of my subsequent videos, I'm going to be talking more specifics about how to set your profile up. This section over here is going to talk about the buyer. This is something you want to pay attention to more so with work market than you do with Field Nation. It is possible on work market for a buyer to stiff you for work. There are some nefarious buyers out there and they will not pay you for the job, even if you complete it. You want to watch these scorecards. Make sure that that buyer has good ratings. If you're not familiar with the buyer, then you want to be a little more cautious. Maybe take one job for them and just assume the risk to test them to see if they're going to be a good buyer or not. 
If you want to dig a little deeper into their profile and see how they performed, you can click learn more. It will bring up a tab that will show you a little bit more about them. This buyer has 100% satisfaction. They're paying early. Their approval time is zero days. I mean, this is a great buyer. This is the kind of buyer you want to get on the good side of. Obviously, I applied for the job, but that's something that you want to look for before you apply to make sure that this is a buyer you want to work with. The beauty of this ticket is it pays a flat rate of $300. Yes, there's a $15 fee, but you're still going to net $285 for driving out and swapping a piece of equipment. This job should be done in 30 minutes or less, and you're going to make really good money for that time. Let's look at requesting another type of job. This job is an SD WAN turnip. Phase three, the buyer is called Core Technology Solutions. You'll see that this is a flat rate as well. Now, jobs can be flat rate, they can be hourly, they can be blended. A blended means that you get paid a certain amount for the first hour and different amounts for every hour after that. So in this case, this job pays a little less. It's 79.44, which is a really odd number. And this is something that you'll notice is if the buyer is kind of absorbing the fee, unlike the other ticket, then this amount is gonna be kind of an odd amount. The buyer's cost on this ticket is probably about $85, $88, and they're just absorbing the fee for you and your net pay is going to be $79.44. This company's scorecard is a little lower than the other one. It's still decent. I mean, they've got a 98.7 satisfaction rating. It takes them nine days to approve. Their payment timeline is two days early. Overall, this looks like a pretty strong buyer. I would be confident in bidding on their jobs. The next question is, do you want the job? Number one, are you available during the time frame? You know, this is on July 14th at 9 a.m. This is a hard start. There's no range on this one. You'll notice on this previous ticket, there was a little bit of a range. It's on the same date, but they allow you to arrive between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. So on this ticket, you need to be able to be there right at 9 a.m. And that's another thing that's going to help you with your buyers. If you're showing up late, you're not going to satisfy those buyers. They're not going to rate you as well. They're not going to work with you. When you're getting started and as you're building your profile and even as you're an experienced tech, you want to make sure you always show up early, always do the things that they want done, because the goal is to get good ratings so that you'll continue to receive work from this buyer and other buyers that are looking at your reviews and your performance. So on this job, this is going to require a laptop and a console cable. You want to make sure you have those tools. I have a playlist on the PhilTech Academy YouTube channel that talks about my van loadout. I talk about all the different tool bags that I have, specific tools that I keep in each bag, and how I stock my van to make sure that I'm prepared for every type of job that you might get on these platforms. Be sure to watch those, that'll help you a lot. But in this case, they're gonna want a laptop and a console cable. If you don't know what a console cable is, this job probably isn't for you. Basically, they're gonna want you to be able to console into the router or the piece of equipment to configure it if needed. Most of the time, the equipment is shipped out pre-configured, and they're gonna have tech support that can do the configuration for you so you don't have to know how to do the configuration, but you do need to know how to connect a laptop, connect a console cable, and use remote desktop. You need to know these basic things so that you can get the tech support guy connected to your laptop so that they can do the configuration if needed. This buyer also goes into more details about the required tools, your required skill sets, they also cover some of the pay. And this particular buyer structures their pay in kind of an odd way. They assume that this 7944 is going to cover two hours worth of work, which effectively means you're getting paid a little less than $40 an hour. And then if it goes after that, they're gonna pay you $25 an hour. So this is kind of a low ball buyer. This is a case where you would wanna do a counter offer to protect yourself. They may find someone that wants to do this job at this rate, but if they can't, you can put in a counter offer and maybe get the job at a better rate. If you're a new technician, new to the platform, this rate may be great for you. And honestly, when you're new, the rates don't really matter. I don't care if the job pays $10 an hour. When you're brand new to the platform, your goal needs to be getting jobs, completing jobs, getting ratings. You need to view those first few jobs as an investment in your future. It's not as important to make money on those initial jobs you need to kind of go into guerrilla tactics mode. It is take anything you can get your hands on, make whatever you can make, but take anything and do it well so that you can get good ratings. So in this case, I don't want to do the job at an $80 flat rate with a subsequent $25 an hour rate. This is where you would make a counter offer. Down at the bottom, you have the option to just apply for the job or you can make a counter offer. And that's what I would do in this situation based on my skill set and my experience. Select counteroffer. Since they word in their description 
that the rate covers up to two hours and then subsequent hours pay $25 an hour, I'm gonna switch this to an hourly. I'm gonna put in whatever rate that I like to make per hour. So you could say $60 an hour. Since their initial rate is designed to cover two hours and then additional hours would be $25 an hour, I wanna actually structure this so that if it goes into the third hour, I'm still making $60 an hour. So I'm gonna say three hours. If there was an additional expense that I knew of up front, for example, if this was at a distance where I would need to ask for travel pay, then in the notes I would put in kind of an explanation saying my hourly rate and the expense is for travel, just so they know why you're requesting it. Now let's say that the date and time didn't work for you. You could also go in and request a different date and time. Right now it is set for July 14th at 9 a.m. Well, let's say you already had a job at 9, but you're open at 1 p.m. So you could set July 14th at 1 p.m. If you want to, you can even set an offer expiration date. Let's say that you want to know within 24 or 48 hours if this is going to be taken or not because you've got to decide on maybe other jobs that you have available. You don't want this offer just sitting out there forever. You know, you could say by July 10th at 8 p.m., I want this offer to expire if it hasn't been taken. Then you can submit and this will go to the buyer and then they'll have a choice. Do they want to assign this job to you or are they going to assign it to somebody else? If you've completed a lot of jobs on work market, your profile is really strong, your ratings are really amazing, buyers are more likely to accept higher counter offers. You could even counter offer for lower. And if you are in that stage of being a new tech to the platform and you can't seem to get anybody to give you any tickets, then you could go into guerrilla tactics mode and request it for less. Now that's not sustainable, but again, when you're new, you're just trying to get established. Making money is kind of secondary to getting the profile established and getting your ratings in. I don't think a lot of people are gonna tell you that kind of advice. And again, it's not sustainable for long-term, but your first few jobs, if you can't get them bidding on normal rates, then do what you gotta to do to get a job. Now let's look at this other ticket and see what it looks like and whether it's something we would want to bid for. On this job, this one pays a flat rate of $125. When it comes to a flat rate, you really wanna read through the details of the ticket to figure out how long do you think this job is gonna take. If this job is gonna take an hour, well then $125 is awesome. But if it's gonna take four hours, $125 is not that great. Sometimes the buyers will give you an estimate in the description of how long they think it's gonna take. If they don't, then you're gonna to have to rely on your experience to know based on what you're reading. Okay, this is probably gonna take two hours. And sometimes you just don't know. Sometimes you are just taking a wild stab at it. You know, this looks like a installation of a Fortinet router and cell backup. Realistically, you're just installing a couple pieces of equipment, but you gotta factor in the time talking to tech support and the time that they're going to take to actually turn up the equipment and get the software side of it done. That's gonna take some time. You know, a job like this, I would probably expect it to take around an hour, maybe two. So the closer to an hour that it is, then the better it is for the pay. If it goes to two hours, then yeah, I'm making 60 bucks an hour. It's not amazing, but it's also not horrific. Now, if it takes four hours, then I'm making 31, 25 an hour. These are just things you need to factor in. And this could be a test case too. You know, you'll see that this is a buyer called SageNet. They've got good ratings. So you can kind of judge that too, because if they're paying this and their satisfaction rating is still high, they're not abusing techs. Because if they were putting techs into situations where they're making 30 or $20 an hour, they would not be getting a good satisfaction rating from the techs. These are all factors you want to look at when you're bidding on your jobs. Now you want to scroll through and look at the overview on every ticket again. You know, this is requiring a laptop. You know, you're gonna have to have at least Windows 7, which good Lord, if you have something beyond Windows 7, <laughs> you know, it needs to have Wi-Fi capability. They are not compatible with Apple OS and Chromebooks. So they want an actual Windows computer. Now you notice they also want a USB port and an ethernet port. You're, you're gonna have to use things like that to console and connect to the equipment. A lot of times when you're installing network equipment, they're gonna want you to connect to it and run speed tests. You know, you need to understand how to set a static IP on your laptop. If you don't know how to do that, you don't need to be taking jobs like this. You need to get more familiar with how these things work. What's nice is they also show you what software you're gonna need. They want you to have TeamViewer on. That's how they're gonna remote into your laptop to do the configuration. They also apparently want you to have Forti Explorer, which since this is a Fortinet being installed, you'll see up here, Fortinet, then Fortinet has their own proprietary software apparently. And they want you to have PuTTY. Again, if you don't know what PuTTY is, you don't need to be doing jobs like this, but PuTTY is basically software to console into devices. You're also gonna to wanna to have a lot of times a hotspot. You're gonna to have to have your laptop on internet independent of whatever's on site. 
because they're going to have to be able to remote into your equipment while you're doing the configuration and you can't be on the network while they're configuring it. Another thing on the pay side that you want to pay attention to is how long will it take for the buyer to release your payment. So this original AMP job we were looking at, this one is paid seven days after approval. So they're going to release your payment seven days after they have approved the ticket. Now it might take them a couple of days to go through and review the ticket and approve it. So seven days can turn into 10 days, relatively speaking, seven days. This SD-WAN ticket pays 15 days after approval. If we look at this ticket, this one pays 10 days after approval. There are going to be some buyers that do approvals 30 even 45 or 60 days out. You just need to be aware of that when you're bidding on the ticket. When you do that job, it might be a month or two before you actually ever see the money. And that's normal in this industry. Don't get freaked out about it. It's just the way it goes. You kind of want to view this as filling up a pipe. That first job is going to go into the pipe and it's going to take 60 days for it to get out the back end, 30 days. But if you're continually doing jobs, then after you get a month or two out, then there's just going to be a constant flow of jobs. You know, some of them are going to be coming out sooner because they're net 10. Some are going to be coming out net 15. Some are going to be coming out net 45, net 60, net 30. And it's going to be all kinds of different time frames. But overall, you're going to see a constant flow of payments coming out of that pipe. My goal with Field Tech Academy is to help aspiring technicians see what they can do and to help experienced technicians have higher performance. If you got value today from what I shared, please like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can learn more about how to be an independent field tech. Don't forget to check out our website at fieldtechacademy.com. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as some other products that can accelerate your quest to become self-employed as a technician. As always, let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.